Bill Stella. Thanks for coming to the show. I want to let you know I've been uh, practicing this in front of a mirror, and uh, it makes me laugh, so I hope you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Coincidentally, that's the same thing I say to a girl before we have sex for the first time. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I haven't always been a stand-up comedian. I used to have a regular job. Then one day the boss came in and asked me to send him an email when I was finished working on this project. Unfortunately, I thought he said send him a she-mail. You know, uh, what the fuck did I know? Maybe that's how we like to celebrate a completed project. But, uh, I don't work there anymore. But last I heard, they were still together. Now, uh, call me old-fashioned, but she males really fascinate me. I have a girl with a pretty face, nice tits, and a cute ass. Who might have let a little thing like a penis get in the way? <laughs> Think about it, there's really a lot of advantages to dating a female. It's never her time in a month, so there's no PMS. That's a plus. <laughs> You probably don't have to beg her that much to get her to have anal sex with you. Probably not too many pregnancy scares. If she moves in, she's probably already got the his in her towel. <laughs> it's probably really hard for her to fake an orgasm. And best of all, as far as a threesome goes, well, you pretty much have that with just the two of you. <laughs> now, uh, anybody see these commercials for doggy steps? This is an actual little staircase for dogs with short legs. Helps them jump up on the bed or the couch easier. Doggy step fans, all right. You know, if I wanted my dog on the bed or the couch, I would have gotten a dog with longer legs in the first place. I'm really just kidding. I have a Yorkshire Terrier, I'd spoil him rotten. In fact, he's so spoiled, he wouldn't even use doggy steps. He's holding out for doggy escalator. Yeah, his name is Oliver, and uh, like I think I said, he's a Yorkshire Terrier. And like most descendants from England, he really loves to drink beer. Yeah. See, if I'm drinking beer, I gotta pour some O'Doul's into his water dish or I can't drink in peace. And it's gotta be O'Doul's because he's underage. And if I'm not drinking beer when I come home, he insists on French kissing me for like 10 minutes. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, come on. I'm the one who insists. But uh, <laughs> he doesn't seem to mind. Maybe he was a French poodle in another life. Anyway, anybody here like to go to the movies? Yeah, all right. Yeah. I love going to the movies, but unfortunately I usually have to go by myself because uh, none of my friends can sit in one place for two hours unless there's drinks being served. I really shouldn't say I go by myself because there's usually a couple of hundred people there and I just don't know their names and we usually take separate cars. But my uh, friends will say, Phil, you know, don't you feel like a loser going to the movies all alone? No, not really. If it's the new Disney movie, it can be a little awkward because... I don't have any kids, and my friends don't trust me with theirs, so uh, I kind of have to improvise. So if you see an Amber Alert, and the child is returned home safely that evening, chances are I just wanted, you know, a little company for the new Shrek movie. <laughs> but it's really a dream of mine to actually be in the movies, or uh, even on TV. I've done some extra work recently. Yeah, I got to be an extra on The Sopranos last season, which was a thrill. I guess they figured I already have a shirt. Thank you very much. But, uh, yeah, I got to sit at the bar at the Bada Bing Club and pretend to drink and look at topless girls for like four hours. It was quite a stretch for me. A brilliant performance. And at the end of the day, they told me the compensation was $75. I thought that was fair, so I paid them. <laughs> anyway, I'm uh, thinking of switching my cell phone service over to Singular. They claim to have the fewest dropped calls. I could really use that because I drop my phone all the time. Yeah, I even dropped it into a uh, public toilet once. So I had it on my belt clip, I opened up my pants, and boom, right in. And this uh, phone did not float, it sunk right to the bottom. Lucky for me, though, there was a used condom in there, and it was filled with semen, so they rescued it. All uh, right. Anybody, uh, anybody here watch the Weather Channel? Anybody here see it tonight? Second thought, don't tell me I'm taping it. I don't want the surprise rooms when I go home and watch it. <laughs> but the Weather Channel, I don't even watch it for the forecast, because I know they can't get that right. Uh, but I watch it for the original programming. Storm stories. This show is for all you sadists out there, and I'm sure you know who you are. It should really be called watching tragedy strike other people. I mean, how many times can you watch a show where the houses are being blown apart by hurricanes, <laughs> babies flying through the air, before you ask yourself, you know, why am I watching this? It's depressing. If you're not depressed, you're probably taking a little too much Prozac. But um, another, a, another original show is uh, It Could Happen Tomorrow. This cheery little show tells what would happen if, oh, I don't know, let's say a level 40 hurricane was to whip through New York and 
all the devastation and destruction this would cause, and they really say it could happen tomorrow. Really, tomorrow. I didn't see that on the five-day forecast. <laughs> you know, uh, tomorrow, partly cloudy and mild, chance of a devastating hurricane wiping out cities. Sunny on Thursday. Now, if you watch this show and you take it seriously and you get upset by it, I wouldn't worry. You probably have plenty of your Y2K rations still left over. <laughs> Now, if this isn't enough programming for you, the uh, Weather Channel also offers traffic updates. Yes, they can't tell you if it's going to snow, but they can tell you if it's backed up at the George Washington Bridge. And if it is, who cares? You just wanted the weather, hence the name of the channel. You know, traffic reports on television? Who are these reports for in the first place? I'm pretty sure if you're stuck in traffic at Lincoln Tunnel, you don't have access to a TV. And if you do, you're going to probably watch something else because you probably already realize you're stuck in traffic. <laughs> And if you're home watching TV on the couch, why do you care if the West Side Highway is a mess? You're, you're, you're home. <laughs> Speaking of home, I'm from New Jersey. Thank you very much. <laughs> Garden State fans, all right. Yeah, in like, uh, New York, they recently passed a smoking ban. So I was forced to give up my secondhand smoking habit. I really saved a lot of money over the years. I mean, I had all the benefits of a smoker, the shortness of breath, smelly clothes, possible lung disease, but I just never had to buy a pack myself. All I had to do was show up at the bar and breathe. Yeah, government's got to ruin everything. Now, if I just figure out a way to secondhand drink, I could really save some money. <laughs> Speaking of smoking, does anyone know who Ronaldo Martinez is? No, he doesn't play for the Mets. He's this uh, happy-go-lucky fellow with the hole in his throat who does the anti-smoking commercials. You know, he sounds a lot like Charlie Brown's teacher. You know, I don't smoke. Why do I have to look at this guy? You know, I'm just watching the Yankee game and I gotta be visually assaulted by him every time a commercial comes on? Don't get me wrong, you know, I'm sympathetic to his problem. I'm also sympathetic to people who have skydiving accidents. I just don't need to see the results of these accidents during the seventh inning stretch. I know, he's trying to do something good. He's trying to show what can happen if you smoke too much. You know, I drink too much, but I'm not gonna show anybody my liver unless I have their prior consent. <laughs> And then at the end of the commercial, he, uh, with the help of his little device, he says, nothing will ever be the same again. <laughs> really, nothing will ever be the same. Have you seen the size of this guy? How much food could he consume before he got the hole in his throat? <laughs> anyway, speaking of uh, commercials, uh, I think I was. Uh, I'm sure you'll probably sick of these prescription drug ads that list like a hundred horrible side effects that are ten times worse than what you had in the first place, but I'll share this one with you anyway. For a nighttime sleep aid, I won't mention it by name, I don't need a lawsuit, but it's a nighttime sleep aid and one of the side effects is possible sleeplessness. Sleeplessness. I already have that side effect, that's why I'm taking the fucking pill in the first place. It's like taking Viagra and finding out one of the side effects is an extremely soft penis. I already have that. I've actually never taken Viagra myself, but my grandfather took it until he was 86 years old. Yeah, he wasn't so sexually active, he just really enjoyed walking around with a heart on. <laughs> Unfortunately, he stopped taking it a few years before he died, or he could have played horseshoes at the wake. You know, he probably still could have, he looked pretty stiff to me. I guess uh, rigor mortis is nature's Viagra. But he was quite a character, actually, he really was sexually active at age 86, I just didn't think you guys would believe that. Uh, he used to have hookers come over to his house like two or three times a week. I thought this was really disrespectful to my grandmother's memory. I mean, she was still alive, she just couldn't remember that the hookers were there. <laughs> he had a phrase, uh, dirty old man doesn't really do him justice, because based on the stories he would tell us, he was pretty much a dirty young man, too. Uh, I remember the times around the holidays, he would gather the grandchildren and proudly tell us all about the time that, as a young man, he gave himself a blowjob. Needless to say, I was mortified. <laughs> mortified that this particular trait doesn't run in the family. <laughs> the gray hair, I got that. The ability to suck my own dick, no. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't need to do that to myself anyway. I'm sure you all can tell I can get a blowjob anytime I like. <laughs> all I need to do is pour a little duels on my crotch, and I'm all set. <laughs> now I know why they call them man's best friend. Hey, what do you want from me? I'm an animal lover. <laughs> Thank you very much. You guys have been great. Have a good night.